Welcome to Advent Day 8 using our Jesse tree. The Jesse tree um, refers to the father of King David, the greatest king of Israel. And the Old Testament tells us that the Messiah will be descended from the line of David. And we as Christians believe that Jesus is the Messiah descended um, from King David. And we're taking some time during Advent to reacquaint ourselves with uh, the stories of God's work with God's people in the Old Testament. We've made our way through Genesis. Now we've moved into Exodus. We've been introduced um, to um, Moses. So um, Moses has fled Egypt and now is um, living in the land of Midian working for his father, Jethro. We are going to pick up um, the story of Moses um, at the end of chapter 2 and um, the beginning of chapter 3. I'm reading from the Message Translation of the Bible, which is a modern language translation by Eugene Peterson. Many years later, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Their cries for relief from their hard labor ascended to God. God listened to their groanings. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw what was going on with Israel. God understood. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look, and God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I have come to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country, and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they're being treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to the Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered, God, but why me? What makes you think I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. I'll be with you, God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then Moses said to God, suppose I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your father sent me to you and they say to me, what's his name? What do I tell him? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses, This is what you're to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I always will be known. And so, Moses still tries to get out of things. 
um, tries to argue with God a little bit about how he's not a good speaker, and God continues to reassure him that he is the one that God wants to do this job, but he'll give him a helper. He'll let his brother Aaron help out um, in this process as well. And so that's where we'll leave our story for today as we hang the um, burning bush up on our tree. <laughs>